Hello everyone, welcome back to another Primateer video. Today, we'll be looking at bearings, and how to use them. Now, to get started, a bearing is a simple component made up of an axle and a ring. These two parts do not collide, and can be used for many things. For example, It can just be used as a wheel on its lonesome. You can make a single wheel out of just a bearing and an axis because the ring doesn't collide with it. And it can also be used for something like a spring, like this one here. This one is a weak spring. And the basic principle is the rings and axles are attached. The axles are represented with this stone, and the rings represented with the wood. Like so. It can also be used for linkages, such as this parallel linkage, which can be used for cutters, controls, and the like. With the parts attached to the axis represented by the wood, and the rings left bare. Now bearings can also be used as a source of power, like this bearing engine here. This one isn't very strong, but it is mainly just for demonstration. As you can see, it's spinning on its own, and some methods can be used to place axes in between these two bearings, and it can be made much more powerful. And another thing that I found useful is the slatch design, made up of... It can be made up with as little as two bearings, but I used technically three with this axis here, just to make it easier to build. And this latch can be used for sudden things as doors, switches, anything like that. I've used bearings to make this lever switch to toggle the main line coming from that generator to that motor over there. And this bearing on the steering block is used to enable and disable the generator. Another example of bearings being used practically for anything other than a wheel is this rifle. As you can see, it uses a weak spring, and there's a lever attached to it, and it's used to connect the current from this line to this line. As you can see, this line here is used to charge the batteries of the rifle and this line goes to the spring and this insulator keeps any energy from going back into this battery and this one keeps it from going back into the input line and as you can see the wire wraps around so it doesn't touch anything when you pull the spring it bridges the current, which heats up this tungsten primer. In addition to that, the primer can also be used as an iron sight. And a very good one at that. Let's take a shot with this. The bullets I'm using are simply a tungsten plate and a five centimeter by five centimeter by two centimeter pellet of gunpowder, arranged like so. Simply load it, just attach the bullet here, and to fire, hold the gun with one hand, lever in the other, 
And... Oh. Let's take another shot. <laughs> nice. Now, we'll be covering the basics of bearing separation. This involves a setup like this one, and this uses a very long line of wooden rods going all the way down to that tree over there. This is important because this utilizes how the game treats object render distance. Now, if we set the render distance from medium to short, it disappears. Now, if we were to attach a bearing to this setup, like so, change the render distance from medium to short, it falls on the ground. And we set it back to medium, it goes back. Now, this can be used to make a very useful set of tools, which involves this bearing and a few additional pieces, if you'd like. Now, you don't have to use bearing rings and axles, but it definitely helps. Alternatively, you can use pieces of any material that are 4 by 4 by 10 centimeters and 10 by 10 by 4 centimeters respectively for the axis and the ring. Now, let's get down to it. First, you're going to want to attach the rings like so and then you're going to want to find a length of material that you want to use i'll be using this ancient alloy rod for example now you're going to want to stick it here like so and then you take the two axis parts and you line them up like so Make sure they're in line and stick it to the center, like so. And then you're going to want to take a length of some other material that's too short, so I'm just going to use one of these wooden rods. And then you're going to want to make sure that this rod attaches to the ground and the axis, let's see if it holds, there we go. Then you can just put those parts away. You take off that axis part, the one touching the rod, and also the ring touching the rod. And then you're gonna wanna take standard bearing and you place it on the ring jig. Now, for this ring jig, you're probably going to have to use a bearing ring because the axe will just get in the way. Now, change the render distance to short, and then take the axle, attach it to the axle jig, like so. Then, reset your render distance. Now, you shimmy the rod in there like so. Now you can detach the jigs, and here you have it. A very usable bearing tool. Let's test this out, shall we? Now, to demonstrate these tools, I will be using them with this 
59,000 kilogram boulder from my stone yard. Now let's start off with the tool we had just made. First, I'm just going to want to stick it onto some kind of object that you want to move. This boulder, for example. And then, you're going to want to take some kind of block of any kind. It doesn't really matter what material it's made of or how big it is, but something like this. Now, all you're going to want to do is just stick that object to the ring and it will move the direction the axis is pointed, like so. And if you want to move it back, you can just flip it around and do the same thing, like so. These other two tools I like to call flickers because, well, I'll just show you. So the process here is the same. Stick the tool on, grab a block of some kind, but instead of sticking it to the ring, you stick it to the body, and this time, it flicks up. Like so. And this here is a very simple variation of the flicker. Now this is the first ever bearing tool I actually made. And the simplest, as you can see. The bearing axle here is in line with the ring. And when you make this tool, if you can't move the axis at all, then just detach and reattach the ring. And then you should be able to, you might not, you might have to try it again, but after a couple tries, you should be able to move the axis a little more freely. Now this tool works the same way. Let me just get this boulder out of the way quick. Like so. And that is a flicker variant. And also, bearings on their own, they're just as powerful, but much less controllable. Now this bearing, on its own, can do quite a lot when moving heavy objects. Let me show you. So first, you're going to want to stick the ring or the axis onto some kind of heavy object. Next, you're going to want to grab the axis and flip it like so, so it's in line. And if you can't move the axis at all, like right now, just detach it, reattach it. Still can't move it right now. Try again. Then I can. And then, when you have it rotated 90 degrees like so, just stick it on there. Three, two, one. Let me just show you where that boulder ended up. It is quite, <laughs> it is really quite strong. The last thing I'll be covering in this video is a particular way to make a more controlled variant of bearing power. For this, you're going to need at minimum three bearings and two bearing axles, but for this demonstration, I will be using five bearings and six bearing axles. First, you're going to want to have your bearings lined up like so. And you stick the center like so. Then change your object render distance from medium to short or long to medium. And then 
you're going to want to stick all of these axle pieces in order. Like so. Now, you're going to want to take the other axle pieces, put three on one side, three on the other, if you're using five bearings. But if you're just using three, you put one on each side. Then, carefully set it down, switch the render distance back to medium, and it should look something like this. A very powerful source of power. And another thing about this is that it is very good for moving around underwater. Let's go test it out quick. Okay, now that we're here, let's switch to first person. Let's take this out for a spin. Very fast. And the three bearing variant only goes about walking speed, which is five meters a second. As you've seen, this bit of pairing power is very, very capable. It can be easily disabled too. All you really need is just something to stick the two pieces together. Stick it like so. Then it's just completely solid. And then if you want to use it again, Take whatever you stuck it with. And there you have it. And that's all for the new form of bearing power. Well, I think that's everything for today. If you liked it, let me know what you think. And if you have any comments, questions, or ideas, please let me know. And as always, vielen Dank für's Zuschauen und tschüss.